Hello and welcome back to No Man's Sky, everybody. This is our 4.2 Sentinel playthrough, and we are at a turning point. Here we get to decide Artemis' fate at Nada's private terminal. Now, I could have done a poll and sent it out there to everybody, but I wanted to make this one a little bit more intimate for those who are watching the series very closely and could basically give me a comment on what they wanted to do. So far, it seems that our decision is to let Nada go. Uh, pardon me, let Artemis go. And I want to reiterate um, something that was brought to my attention, something I keep forgetting about, as she is going to be let go. Artemis being the name of the goddess of the hunt and a female. So we know that Artemis must have been female. So let's get into Terminal Prime and follow along. The machine is ancient and powerful, a relic of a world long since destroyed. The craft is extraordinary. It is clearly tended to often and with great love. I feel a whisper, not as faint hum over the speaker as they commune with the machine. The words on panel unscramble themselves. Nada entity authorization detected. Secondary simulation, right enabled. This relic is a simulation of a solar system. A prayer offered by ancient Corvax to the Atlas, now reshaped at the heart of the anomaly. A single false solar system, so dear to Nada, it will act as a home for Artemis, should I wish it. So we're not going to upload Artemis, we're going to allow Artemis to pass. Now I've done it both ways, I've done it with uploading and I've done it against. To me, the character of Artemis, once you learn, once you have learned the truth of the whole of No Man's Sky, of who your character is in relation to all this, you start to recognize the fact that there's obviously something false to the whole system, that it, none of this is real. And that the character that you see before you is literally a character that is being enacted to do something remotely. It's a character in a game, just that simple. That's what the Atlas is, that's what these characters are. So the proper thing to do would be to allow the program of Artemis to pass. There's no reason to allow this AI to continue on in a false solar system in pain, never to meet your character or Apollo or any other character whatsoever. So we are going to allow Artemis to die. Even as I process my decision, not as hum takes on a quiet new intensity. I speak and their voice replies, intelligible now. They talk gently and suggest I place the Ark upon the terminal. I do so and hear a whisper, a prayer. The Ark begins to unfold, twisting from its center, releasing the traveler's soul within. I witness a spark of blue light blaze within the air before me. It fades after a moment, and with it, the last remnant of Artemis within this world. I hear Nada's voice over the speaker, intelligible now and reassuring. They tell me that it is done. Artemis is at peace now. They suggest I do not dwell on these moments. They tell me that I did the right thing. And so, S is Artemis. Truly and completely. So, let's take a quick look at our log is our next thing that we're going to do. We are, we are sharing the burden of Artemis' face with Nada. We've already done that. We're going to continue to investigate. It's time to go back to our first traveler. And we start to really learn what's happening. I don't think you need to talk to anybody here. No. Everything's done. You can talk to them if you wish and you can get more information. Artemis Echo has been disconnected, freed from a cruel life. You have done well, Traveler. Your guilt it is a sacrifice for the one you called friend. Go on without regrets. You did what you had to do, friend. 
Traveler Artemis is free of pain now. You can say the same. And therefore, you know that is Let's move on. So we're gonna head out into space to let Apollo know about this right and return to make space. Let's go ahead and Receiving. The hollow terminal is showing available again. Your signal was thought you were gone. It is a relief to hear Apollo again. It feels like we have not spoken in a long time. Explain. I try to recount the experience to Apollo as best I can. The gateway, the strange planet, a vast machine, the crimson orb. As I talk, I realize the mo memories themselves are unstable, that I cannot form them in my mind. It is just a dull, aching red. I tell Apollo that I think I saw the atlas itself. You? You saw it? You met the atlas? The Gek, the Corvax, they worship it as a god. I never thought it was real. I never thought. Are you alright? I can't imagine what you've gone through. I say it was not a god. I tell Apollo of all of the things the atlas said, how it spoke of travelers and sentinels as if we were protocols not living things. The way it views us, the way it looked at me, I felt as if life and death were just fragile dreams, not real concepts at all. At least it didn't harm you. And I think, I think there's something in what you just said. The Corvax pay homage to the Sentinels precisely because they believe them to be the servants of this Atlas. We should investigate further. This machine will lead us to the Sentinel Nest. We will be rich before we know it. I don't agree. Talk of money is absurd, but I think the right thing, right thing to say would be that there are more important things. I suggest we have bigger things to worry about. The Atlas felt hostile, inexplicably, uh, inexplicable in its motives and purpose, not to mention all that has happened since. I tell Apollo of Artemis' grave. In my encounter with the mysterious traveler, no. I suggest there is more on more going on here than an opportunity to earn units. Artemis is dead. I don't... How? Who would... I know I made fun of them. That was easy. They cared. They believed. And I... What's happened to them? Where have you buried Artemis? I want to say goodbye if I can. Tell them of your choice. No, I will never lie. You all know, know me for that. I tell Apollo that no gave me a way of saving Artemis to restore them to a form of life. Apollo was initially excited at the prospect of going to meet Artemis, but I explained that I could not do it. It would have not been a life, just an empty existence within the simulation. I had to allow Artemis to find peace in death. I ask if this was right. You did the right thing. You tried. Whatever you might be feeling right now, you know that you are a good friend. I have to go through the portal and join you. That much is clear. We just need to figure out the right glyphs, the right address for that world of yours. Find a monolith and search for patterns in the data. These things are machines, and we simply need to understand their code. So there we are. We have to use a monolith to locate a portal for Apollo. We have to use C to, to search for portal layouts. Let's do that. Get a nice picture of Olus. Be a great picture for our front segment. I like it. All right, looks like our list for that is over here. It's a moon. And so it is. So we 
found a monolith. Oh, we almost found a monolith. I'm supposed to search. We shouldn't have to look far. Monoliths are pretty easy to, to, to see, if you will. And merely doing that most of the time will not reveal what we're looking for. Now, there's something there, but I don't think that's a monolith. That actually might be what we're looking for. Yep, that is what we're looking for. Okay, good deal. Now, of course, before we get started, we want to go through all these. A couple of Ikeen words. Let's go ahead and grab all three. It's just congratulating us on learning more words. See the stone of the monolith, it's immovable, immovable muted silver, and yet something lurks beneath. It is gray and yet not gray, a crimson calling out from somewhere below its cold, cool surface. Okay, and portal, and tracing the source to its destination. Looks like it's over that way. Excellent. Okay. Let's take a quick peek. Let's guess what we get when we do this. The only creature on the planet. There it is. The one of one. Might as well do it while we're here, right? We get 250 nanites for it, but at the same time, we also get the achievement. Okay, how far away is this? Just over two minutes, it says. And a half. It's a moon, so we should, we should get there a little bit quicker than that. There we go. And it's daylight where we're going to be heading. So that's good, too. So hopefully you understand the fate of Artemis. You understand the fate of this universe. And you're starting to, if you haven't already figured it out, you're starting to understand the nature of the character that you're playing. achievement real quick. Okay, yeah, we have to charge it. So this is the fun part. So we got to charge all 16 glyphs. Requires different nutrients. We can either use sodium nitrate or regular sodium on this one. And you'll see we can use it here, 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 and here. So I can put it over here. See what that's like. You got four different ones you can do this with. Next one requires dihydrogen, deuterium, which we don't have, cobalt, ionized cobalt, or salt. I'm going to use up what salt I have just because I want to get rid of it all. Yeah, we only got 15 of it. So you notice it says 95, so now I can put one like one high dihydrogen. Uh, I'm going to use regular cobalt here and regular cobalt over here. All right, so those are done. This one requires copper, cadmium, or any of the other high metals. Hopefully we have enough copper to do this, otherwise we're going to have to get some. Just enough, good. Last one is carbon, condensed carbon, or oxygen. We should have plenty of oxygen, so let's just go ahead and use the oxygen up real quick. And there we go. Traveler capture loop enabled. Anomaly event contained. The portal seems to beg me as I approach, demanding my attention. It requires me to activate. It requires me to travel on. I'm unsure if I should listen. Request this planet's address. And there it is. Now you don't have to do anything with this. You don't have to make a screenshot or anything like that. You just get the address. Okay. 
terminus right over here. It looks like it's actually pretty close by. Land on Ooh, gravitational amount of that. Those are always cool. They don't really mark. going on lately but it's like the mission icon of this universe. so very odd so the anomaly event see pretty cool well it looks like we got one of those let's go ahead and grab it there we go well, looks like we got three out of that excellent I'll check this too we can always use the extra stuff from it Hey, mining beam module. Those are handy. Does my multi-tool have any room for that? Yes, it does. Okay, let's go ahead and grab it. Uh, put you over here. What does that give us? Oh, nice. That's actually pretty good. Good, good, good. Nice little upgrade. Get some credits. About 2,000. That's not too shabby. Anything over here? Maybe some nanites or something? Good. And we could get that thing down there, but I don't care. Okay, let's go ahead and get going. Well, let's go up to the platform. We're using very little jet juice. There we go. Multiple sources. Okay, we're going to tune into Apollo. Should be on the left, I think. Yep, there he is. Have you found the glyphs of for your world? I'm almost ready. My suit is upgraded, my stomach is full, and I've hired a geck to look after my farm while I'm away. Ask about the farm. Yes, I have a farm. What of it? It's not much, mostly fruit I found in my travels, but I'm hoping to expand. Anyway, this is no concern of yours. We have a portal to attend to, do we not? As I look at Apollo, I think of all that I saw within the portal of what happened to Artemis when they walked that same path. I think of the face of the atlas, of the way Nada warned me not to return to those tunnels. I do not know if the portals are safe. Give Apollo the glyphs. I give Apollo the glyphs, asking them to take care to remember what happened to Artemis. They assure me that they will, promising to see me soon. Before I go, they advise me to find out what I can from this so-called null. They warn me to be careful too. Make sure nothing else happens. Uh oh. Null's here. Okay, let's talk to Null. Two lost souls. One who cared too much and the one who cared and one who cared too little. Their lives have not become what they what was promised, have they? Every sentient being that has ever lived has felt that way at some point. I know I did once upon a time. I was angry, confused at my solitude, my own solitude. Imagine my surprise when you woke me. Oh, I know you didn't mean to. I know you were just playing around with portals, but whatever you did, I'm here now. And I need your help. The Atlas. It is not what you think it is. Something is happening to the universe. Something I need your help to figure out. Ask why they need your help. The Sentinels do not just keep the peace across the universe. Their motives run deeper than that. Seeking out anomalies in the multiversal structure and eliminating them from existence. Have you looked at me? What do you think a sentinel would do if it, if they came across my form? No, it has to be you, Traveler. There is an observatory nearby. It will lead you to the location of a crashed freighter of great interest to our investigation. There. There we will find the f first secret, I am sure of it. Know that the Atlas is neither enemy nor friend to us. No more than the air or the wind might be called such names. But it is terrified. It is in pain. And we have a responsibility to help its suffering. No matter the cost. Okay then. Are we actually done this time? Looks like we are. Okay. So that was the reason for the multiple signals. Let's go down this way. Okay. So we need to visit Null's chosen observatory, which is over there. And it disappeared. Oh, but it's 
that says the great news of Apollo to Nada. So let's go ahead and head out to space real quick. What cool background this is. further down too bad I can't go faster sorry let's just hold still for a second yeah isn't that pretty cool or what that is no man's sky I love it absolutely Okay, let's go to space and the great news to Apollo. News of Apollo, pardon. News of Apollo to Nada and to Polo. So I'm sure Polo has some news. So like I keep saying, pay attention to that file. It actually gives you more information than you would have had normally. So the two storylines are intertwined. And this freighter we're going to find is going to give us a little bit more information as to what's actually happening. Again, if you haven't already figured it out, please. Ah, the gestures, yes. You are becoming more visible than that, of traveler friend. Your eyes lend themselves to our small convergence. This makes Nada happy. Nada is not happy with other events. Portals are infected, vector for corruption. Artemis entity perished in the war. Apollo entity will only spread corruption. Danger, ask more. Atlas Falsity watches the portals. Portals belong to them. Those who enter may belong to Atlas Falsity. Great danger. Okay, so you notice we get the Quicksilver and we get our nanites. Nada friend does not trust the portals, scared of rampancy of the Crimson Hunter, but I do not fear in the same way. What might we discover, Traveler friend? What might we learn from them? They have the same roots as you, as our home, as all this universe. Ask about fear. Nada is scared we may lose our home. I am scared I will forget the world outside it. Do not let us forget, Traveler friend. Isn't that interesting? Do not let us forget these things. So I don't know if Polo's male or female. I'm just going to stick with he for now until we have an argument about it. But do not let us forget. Interesting. Off we go. Time to visit the Chosen Observatory. do getting the salvage data is very important because you never know when you might need to buy things from the anomaly okay more nanites credits again almost 2,000 not bad and we'll get some nanites from here okay let's uh, head for the observatory now this one as we can see is an abandoned I am not going to bother with the eggs at this time. Because we want to get... Oh, there was a course on the other side. Good grief. Any bad guys in here? Any 
developing tendrils or something? No? Okay. Alright, we can gather some stuff, but I'm going to hold off on that except maybe learn a word. And I don't know how my health is, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the first aid kit. Alright. Noel's prediction was correct. The terminal is curiously open. The log's ready for me to read. The observatory appears to have functioned as a salvage station manned by a GEC specialist. Pay attention to that. A translator. They were accused of questioning things they should, that should not be questioned, of sowing the seeds of dissent. This posting was meant as a punishment, but it appears that this posting was the making of them. They found strange things in the wrecks, aberrations, data that spoke of worlds that did, do not exist, and events that did not happen. That geck went out to investigate one such craft, the life signature of a Corvax still on board. They never returned. Is this how Nada and Polo met? Is this how my friends found each other? There is a signal in the console, a warning on repeat. 16 short bursts of data in a loop. Extract the coordinates. I extract coordinates for the distress signal. A crashed vessel awaits me on another world. Pull back. And radio crash site located. So you notice, Nada, pardon me, Null is leading us of Nada Apollo. Isn't that interesting? Did I break something down there? I did. Ha! Ah. doing me any good to sit here anyway. Interesting. I don't know if you're that way. That's interesting. Oh my gosh. Isn't that easy? You gotta remember that. This is fun, actually. Okay. I think I got all of it, believe it or not. Alright, where's my ship? Alright. Good deal. How many did we get? That's pretty cool. I have to remember that. Holy mackerel, we got 30 of them? And, oh, I forgot we got that earlier from the, uh... From Artemis' grave, you get a memory fragment. If you open that up, it gives you gives me an auto launcher. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. There we go. So this auto auto recharger is what that is. So that'll help us recharge our launcher from now on. So awesome. All right. Let's head out. And that's our freighter crash site. Just gotta get up a little higher. There it goes. These two next to each other make the most of the Can't even talk to <laughs> The most amazing, beautiful scenes that you can ever see. space in your exosuit, which I happen to have, so we're in good shape there. I don't think I need food anymore, but I'll hang on to it. Let's go ahead and read this terminal. I'll get an idea. Now, this is a radioactive planet, so we don't want to spend too much time outside. Crew manifest missing. Limited data available, so we need the log encryption keys. So we'll need a few of those, so we get them from you know where. We get them from the cargo containers, that's correct. So there's one right there. You can dig down to it if you want, dustily if you want. 
like that. And you'll have to usually clear out some stuff around it. And it releases uh, radiation. radiation. So you'll want to get out of there quick. Okay, so we got one lock encryption key. These areas, when you have ships flying over, they tend to attract traders. So you may have some of the land here you can try to trade. Just keep that. Okay, so let's head into this one. And I'll show you what happens if you stay too long. If you watch, see my radiation is dropping. Yeah, so you gotta be careful of this. Oh, we got a third one. Now, log encryption keys are not worth that much. You know, really not worth a lot. Uh, go ahead and get four of them, if you will. There's one right here, if you look down, see? And you can just do it this way, too, if you wish. See? So you don't have to dig if you don't want to. I do recommend getting four of them. run over here. So four of them ought to do the trick. And then we can get the rest. Okay. Read log. I do not know who will read this message. I do not know if anything will survive. But I must... But I must die as I lived. I will record it all, even in the face of oblivion. The swarm came to every world. The drones acted erratically. Not attacking. Just watching. Time passed and the sentinels did not seem so much of a threat anymore. They were peaceful now, we thought. We had been forgiven. We were wrong. Continue. Ship logs requesting, accessing, so we have to use a second one here. Third one, if you will. They struck as one, an attack somehow coordinated across unfathomable distances. With a fury exceeding all prior skirmishes, the Sentinels annihilated all biological life within the universe in a span of 54.2 standard minutes. So in less than an hour, all these sentinels attacked and annihilated everything. Sound like Order 66 or what? Only I remained. The Korvax stood with me in the end, to their credit. Interesting. They concealed me within their flotilla as they headed towards the center. Continue. They are coming now. The screams of my friends resonate in every hall every corner the sentinels have found me i told nada to leave there it is i told them what we already know all of us we are not alone if even if i die nada will find me again in another universe ten just like me a thousand million we are not alone for every soul is many even in the face of 16 we must declare that we lived we existed no matter the horror at the end they are at my door i error unexpected log, log termination. So now we have learned the fate of Nada and Pola. The true fate of Nada and Pola. And now you see the truth of the universe. So now you know. Let's see if this gives us anything different. The secret of the universe is that they have existed continue to exist even in the face of annihilation they will exist again and again and again over and over as if they were almost like a save game but now we'll get a couple of very expensive items out of this salvage data is not that expensive but at the same time it's worth something one thing we did get is we got this, unstable gel, 50,000 units. These are worth a little bit more, so we'll hang on to it. All right, that takes care of all the data from this site, so let's go ahead and head out. We have to transmit the freighter's log to null. For a hollow terminus, which looks to be over here. Yeah, I know it's 
it's here. I'll let you find the signal because you're not going to let me see anything else for now. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we do have some stuff over here. Let's go ahead and grab it. And you're wondering to yourself, why are you doing this? Well, if I decide I want to keep this save, it'd be nice to have all these things. You know what I mean? Case. Okay. Okay, hollow terminus, here we come. Nope. Nice that we don't have to climb the stairs anymore, right? Or the, the ladders. Okay, multiple signal sources. Got the same thing we did before. We're going to speak to them all. What did you find out there? Tell me everything. Share the discoveries. I tell Null of the freighter in its recordings, how it spoke of a world where the Sentinels eliminated all life, leaving only a traveler and a single corp -ax entity. I choose my words with care. You think I do not know that the, who the corp, that corp -ax entity is? Do not be so naive, traveler. Do you think anything you have read is a surprise to me? But I had to be sure of what I suspected. I know it now. The Atlas is with you. You could not see these things if I did not wish it. If it did not wish it. That freighter was a wreck from a parallel universe. There are countless such places within our multiverse dimensions where things happen differently. But there are three exceptions to this. The Atlas is omnipresent in all. A singular being with a singular perception. The Sentinels move between dimensions at will. Let's ask about the Sentinels. They served the Atlas once. They were guardians of reality, defenders of civilization. They hunted for errors within the universe, preventing destruction and loss of life. The annihilation recorded in that log, well, something must have been quite wrong for them to do a thing like that. Let's ask about the Atlas. The Atlas created all life, and the Sentinels defended it, searching for anomalies within that creation. That they annihilated an entire universe, well, something must have been quite wrong for them to do a thing like that. After a time, the Sentinels ended their service to the Atlas. Ask how they know. I've been alive for a very long time, Traveler. I know as much as you would know had you seen the things that I have seen. It was the Travelers who corrupted existence. Our arrival was meant to herald a glorious age, but we made a terrible mistake. I... I committed an act beyond forgiveness. And from this deed, Paradise was lost. So Null is claiming that he is the reason why we are having the problems we have right now. But something is different in this cycle. The walls between universes, they grow thin. Nada knows this, but they keep their head in the sand. We must learn what we can from each species before we decide what to do. Visit a Viking cartographer and speak with them. I will translate. And the uh, communication. So you notice we're not hearing anything from Apollo, right? We'll get to that later. Radiation there we go. So we need a Viking cartographer first. So we get to a little bit of a grind portion of this now. So we're going to go through this. You notice the icon disappeared again. For a keen cartographer, and I kind of know what we're going to be doing here. So. so he says each of the species by key. X. to share news of Null's plan with Nada in space. So before we visit the, them, let's just...
but this this will get us up to 900. I'm not sure if we get any more. There's that thing on the left-hand side. Very tempting. Let's check it out. I'm very, very curious as to what that is. We get salvage data and 508 nanites, and I really want to do this. There is nothing going on. You have no idea how to handle this. Let's do this real quick. We're going to take a segue. We are at the 41 minute mark of the video at this point. So let's go ahead and do this because I've been dying to find out more about this. I start the mission. Yep, not going to do that either. The joy of home. So we're going to find out more as we exit the station. We'll come back. Remember that we can always, as soon as we leave the anomaly next time, we'll bring us back to the same exact system that we're in right now. Staying in the same system. Interesting. Where's that? I've never had that happen before. Is it that simple? So this is the strangest thing. We should set up the joy. Very curious as well. Okay. Sentinels are attentive only, so we're okay there. Uh, we have to build a, a base computer. Okay, here we go. We're going to build a place to live real quick. I'll go ahead and get rid of it morning die. So yeah, a little segue into this 41 minute mark. So I'll put that, make sure we put that in the description. Build a deep water chamber. Do I even have access to that? We do. Okay, I need pure ferrite to do it, and I happen to have some. It will let me do it here. Okay, well, there we go. Now what? Uh, moon pool floor. A moon pool floor? Oh, look at that. Oh, wait, we need what? Three crystal sulfides. We need one. We need those. I'm going to go ahead and get them. Pardon me. Oh, hello there. I'll go ahead and scan you guys. Get you. Get you. Uh, looks like crystal sulfide right down there. Buried underneath. Oh, it's under there. It's sideways mounted. I think we're going to get hurt here. We're safe. So it's like a mystery, I guess a mystery quest, if you will. There we go, it goes in the floor of our little habitat here. That's fine, I'll put it in. Uh, glass tunnels, which we'll need glass for, I'm assuming. One glass and two more crystal sulfides, so we'll need four more crystal sulfides. Yeah, this is going to be... Got plenty of these clams. 
mountains. Sometimes you'll be able to see it visually with your own eyes before your radar will pick up on it. Four twelve. Wow. We find everything on this planet. We're going to get a, quite a chunk of change here. Let's so take it. Hope you don't mind the little segue on this. This is kind of a bonus, if you will. So we'll let this mission, uh, this particular video, go a little longer than usual. Music. Reminds me of somebody's show. I want to the channels. Oh, there's one right there. I get the feeling if we can find more than one of these things, we should get as many as we can, because I don't think we're going to need one. We actually do need to find two. There's one here and there's one. Oh, that's not what I thought it was. Let's see how fast we can get back this way. Yeah, that didn't work out really well. Hit the water too quickly. So there you go. Sometimes if you hit the water just right, you can get a really quick, quick boost. Let's check out some more animals. Looks like we got a few more. Space station, that's pretty cool. All right, let's go. I could call the ship over and then fly back, but I'm cheap. Once you hit the water, you're going at a much quicker rate, and your backpack is recharging at the same time. And you keep that speed for a good while before you finally run out of go juice. And if you can find a place to stand back up again, you might be able to get a little more boost out of it. 
No. Nope. Not shallow enough, is it? Oh. No, nope, that didn't quite get me where I needed. That's okay. We got a good amount of uh, crystal sulfides now. We could create a subnautilus, as you know, we've already done that mission, so we could get the places a little bit quicker, but honestly, you, you know as well as I do, the subnautilus doesn't really get you that much quicker. It's okay. It's not terribly fast. So, now we need glass, too, right? Let's see, how much glass do we need? We need one glass, two glass. All right. Let's check out. And we still don't have that, so we're going to have to place our finer down to do this. Uh, let's see, we're looking for... Two of these. We might need more, but we'll find out. So it's been ten minutes thus far. Last times. One, two. You don't have to be fancy. And it says a cuboid room. Okay, where's our cuboid room at? Oh, that. Glass cuboid room. We need two more glass. Glad we have enough for it. There it is. I have no idea what was getting what we were getting into with this one. We'll come back in a minute. Uh, let's put you there. Now what? I have to build a sofa, a lab lamp, and blue light, and a bed. Do we even have those? Lab lamp. Okay. What does this require? Condensed carbon. Uh, lab lamp requires sodium. Blue light, also sodium, and what was the last one? A bed. Which is the bed. Also condensed carbon. Okay, so we're good there. Do I even have a way in this thing? No, I don't even have a door. So I guess I gotta build a door? Let's put it over here where we can actually get in. Okay. So, we want furniture. Let's put the sofa over here. Okay. We need to build a lab lamp. Put it right here. Okay, a blue light. Let's go over here. We'll put it right above. And then finally we need a bed. There we go. Oh, we need four blue lights. Right out loud. Where are they? Over here. Two, three, and uh, over here, four. Upload the base. Upload base. Okay, base uploading. And that should be it, right? Mission complete. All right, so we're done. Um, you know what? Okay. Let's 
start with you. And we'll get everything out of it. Now, did we get the couch and stuff? I guess we did, huh? Yeah, we got everything. That's pretty cool. There we go. And now we can get rid of the base, because I don't think we need it, do you? Delete the base. There we go. So we got all those materials back that we ended up using. Alright, let's get going. Get some nice stuff out of it. So, go ahead and do that, and then we're going to go talk to Nada and Polo. And complete the mission. So what do we get? We get 508 nanites, and I guess the one salvage data, and that's it. Okay. So now we're going to go up here, we're going to talk to Nada and Polo, which doesn't seem to have chosen our mission yet. Hold on. There we go. There we go. Yeah, you're gesturing again. Nah, thank you. Viking entities have long history. Conflict, honor, rage, pride, and yet so static, defined by themselves, never changing. Not awaits as if expecting me to ask something else. So we ask about Viking. Viking hate the Gek, hate the Sentinels. Sentinels hate our home. Gek hate Corvax. Nada should be friends with, with Viking. Yes? <laughs> No, Nada does not think this. Does not think this way. Okay, so we get our 80 nanites and our 150 quicksilver. Missing friend, as you do their business. Well, you must, but always discover for yourself. Think about what you do. Do not just follow instructions with your eyes not open. Isn't that the truth, right? Big, grumpy fellows. They do not like friendly little geck. Perhaps they are wise. Like all beings, you will see their value if you get to know them. Well, nice. I prefer Polo, to be honest with you. I know he sends us on crazy missions sometimes and does weird things, but it's kind of like his flip. -ups. Everything is happy attitude. Not as a little too stoic and static. All right, off to the space station. Space station. Hey, look, there's a space station. Photographers are over here on the left. Let's go visit our Viking cartographer. But as with everything, draw the Viking with and the. Okay, good. Pro Viking War. As the warrior begins their bark, I feel a strange frequency vibrate through my skull. I see a flash of Knoll's glowing orb behind my eyes. Suddenly the Viking's words ring clear in my ears. Ah, pathetic interloper. Prying into Viking secrets, cowardly spy, I should kill Ra. But the traveler must be aided, such is command of Herc. Prove yourself, interloper. Retrieve the words of Herc, ascend in Viking glory, then you shall have your words. I will reveal only this location of Herc's command is marked for you. Commune with their words, Gra. Leave. So, as with everything, it becomes a grind. Now we have to recollect a Viking artifact to prove our worthiness to the cartographer. So, on the go. Viking Reliquary. So, back 
back to Hadri. And we're going to discover the Viking army. So this is the approximate location. I expect it to disappear. There it is. So we're looking for something that looks like a historical structure. Could be straight down, could be off to one side or the other. Look for a little bit of a mist. I love the hover ability of this ship, man. It's too cool. will be spared. Their journey through the cosmos shall not be thwarted, so it is decreed. The will of her commands it. The Viking shall honor the judgment and the belief of the ancients. Ancient knowledge passed down through generations of Viking warriors spills from the marker stone, filtered into my mind like a long-forgotten memory. Speak in Viking. I begin to speak, and my voice is seized by an unknown power. I roar, taking myself by surprise. None hamper the path towards Drindar. As the Sentinels, they must be destroyed. Their time will be ended. So has it been written, so it shall come to be. This the Vikings swear. We speak again. I call out once more, my throat harsh and gasping. The sound guttural. The swords spill forth, summoned by the power of the monolith. The flip of perk speaks of the rise of the travelers. They shall ascend, delving into the boundless void. The Vikings shall not impede their ascent, for the travelers must prevail. So decrees the word of her. As the words fade, their lines still resonating in my vision, I find myself in possession of an ancient tome. The Viking Tablet. And you'll notice I saw some bug like creatures I think we've already discovered before. How neat. And a whole bunch of sentinels are now attacking me. What do you think? Here's a great part. We don't actually have to escape. We just have to hide. Sentinel combat Oh, there's no place to hide in this one, huh?
Oh, you gotta get out of here. So, what do we want to do? Sell anyway. Let me see what else we have in our inventory. Nothing there. What do we got over here? We got some of these. Uh, let's grab one of those. That's always nice. Did it give us any health? Nope. Solar panel. That's okay. Here's another one. Was this one better than that one? That's, that's yeah. You know what? That might be better. Yeah, it is. Okay. And this goes with our. And then over here, let me just check something here. This is... Whoa. Okay, that's actually pretty good. Minus two, minus two. Yeah. There we go. That's going to give it a lot more power. All right, good deal. So, you know, hey, got some extra stuff out of it. And you see we got some extra tools as well. And an extra chromatic metal. Nice. We got a lot of stuff we can sell off, you know. All right, let's go see the uh, cartographer. journey milestone. Oh, it must be Sentinels. Yeah. 40 starships. Yes. I can't get this off my screen. I have to wait till it goes away. Because it'll give me the tab option. There we go. No wish for me to visit the Viking and learn what I could. Of the Atlas, the creator of all universes, the Sentinels, rebellious hunters of anomalies, and the travelers who committed some unforgivable, who committed some unforgivable act long ago. I don't like that last part. Because it says the travelers, plural, who committed some unforgivable act. Null committed the unforgivable act. Let's be very clear. We already learned that. Null admitted to it. Let's keep going. To reveal the tablet. Gra, you have communed with Herc. You are worthy, interloper. Make your request. Be bold. Uh, let's ask about the Atlas. Gra, do not speak that name. Only pathetic beings worship liar Atlas. They ask about why the Atlas is a liar. Any being that claims to be a god is not one interloper. Progenitor Herc knew this well. Battle brother Nal did not. They died for a false dream. The Viking tells me of their history of wars with the Gek of Korvax slaves and Tyrannus empires. The Viking suggests that if the Atlas is a god, then it is insane. I'm about to leave when I notice something on the Viking's terminal, two digits blinking endlessly. They feel familiar. Ask about 16. I... Grot. What? What? Interloper, what face are... The Viking is visibly pained by the mention of the number, staring at their terminals if they have seen it for the first time. Their words slur a strange sound entering every sentence. Whoa. Kinda creepy. That's okay, we're out of here. So now, guess what? We have to speak to a Corvax cartographer. 
which is going to be in a different system, shall we? Hold on. Okay, it's not doing it. Hold on. Space looks familiar. Why don't you just park me on the outside of the anomaly? I'll just walk in quicker. Life is everywhere, but nowhere. The convergence has seen all planets, but where are they really? Where is home? Where is safe? This is a pattern, travel friend. All things are patterns, signs of the Atlas Falsity. Ask about the Corvax. Corvax see across the universe with countless convergent eyes, minds, and harmony. Worship Atlas Falsity. To understand Atlas Falsity is the edge of our collective mind. Nada does not wish to go to that edge, and so Nada is divergent. Nada is exiled, hunted. No place for the willful. Interesting. There's our nanites, there's our pixel. The actor are always competitive, always squabble. It is not personal. My person is not rejected. Nada. Or Nada suffers. It's my Corvax. Their kind expect harmony, unity. Nada sees in a way they do not see, and so they reject one another. Convergence was bought at a great cost. They will fight to maintain it. Anomalies are cast aside. The necessary sacrifice. Interesting. So again, you just learn as you go, little bits and pieces of what everybody seems to think that's going on. Um, what is that at the top? Oh, that's the uh, special mission for the weekend of the Nama mission. Shh. Okay, here we go. Onward and outward. We have to go to a photographer and a Corvax system. Current mission, so you notice it's taking me very close by to the system, which happens to be Corvax, as you can see. We expand it out, we get more data. So we don't have conflict data because we don't have a conflict uh, scanner, but we do know that it is a decent system. But we've been here. So away we go. Let's see what we can find. So, what did we learn? We learned that Null caused all the issues within the universe. That entities within the universe appear to be either AI programs or programs in their own right that might be controlled elsewhere. Very interesting. So, none of these really are. Is it? You make the ball. So we're going to hit the Corvax one, and guess what we're going to do? We're going to talk to them, they're going to tell us that we're going to send a special, we're going to do that grind again, we'll come back. And as you can see, we're getting more and more stuff in our inventory. We've got 14 million, and we get, we, we're getting more and more stuff as we go. You know, we're going to take the stairway this way. Oh, ramp. I'll take the ramp. Run right into the couch. Talk to the Corvax. It says, stop right there. Autographic entity, blah blah blah, outposts. Query Corvax history. Once again, I sense Null's presence. The Corvax feels it too, they do not show it. They begin to speak, their words clear and bright, possessed by my unseen companion. The arrival of travelers is anticipated, but you are not ready yet. We must know that you are the one we seek. There is an anomaly, a glitch. It is guarded by holes through which the convergence cannot see. Move through this space, retrieve that which cannot be retrieved. Interesting. So we can move. We have to go through a space that the Corvax cannot go through. 
in order to retrieve what they cannot retrieve. Gee, I wonder what that means. It says search for a water system. We're going to go back to the system I think we were just in. Am I right? I didn't select that. I'm selecting that. Put that out. <laughs> oh, when it does that. It jumps around all the way. So, who knows? Okay. Here we go. You know, I'm looking at the volume of the video. And I think that the game volume may be a little high. 16 minutes into the video and I just noticed this. I apologize severely for that. I'm so, so sorry. Let me see if that helps a little bit. Yeah, that brings it down a little bit. I'm very sorry about that. That must have been really loud. I apologize. And I'm sure I'm going to get comments on it that the video was too loud. Well, if you watched it all the way through, you would know that I knew that. If you know what I mean. So, we found a fragmented memory that we're heading towards right now. Hopefully this thing won't disappear as we get close. Never mind. Okay. That's interesting. Very interesting. This one seems to be the only one that's above water, except for one further over there. So I'm going to go ahead and land over here. Wow, we got pretty close. Okay, so we should be right over here. Oh, I think I see something right down there. Yep, there it is. I thought I saw something from up above. I'll grab these because they're worth a good amount of cash. Should be two of them. One on top? No? Sometimes there's one on top. I like to double check. Okay. Here's our terminal right here. Attempting to read data mem read memory at that place, so we access the memory. Disconnection is not permanent. It is merely the start of a new equation. On Corvax Prime, entities who passed in on into the Corvax Echoes left their shell for their descendants. So has been the way of the Corvax, an endless carapace cycle that knows no end. This way will continue. It will continue for as long as our lights still shine. The terminal's message is delivered. It shorts out its strange existence no longer tolerated by our reality. A small unit aglow with ethereal light is left at my feet. A, div a divergence cube. Okay, good. So you know the reason, first of all, it appears that it is an area that this place was above the water at one time, and it is no longer. Very interesting, right? Let me see, is there any animals floating around under here that we haven't seen yet? No? Okay. Let's just head back to our ship then. I think we've done enough, don't you? So... This was above water at one point, and now it's below water. So if you remember Dreams of the Deep, well, there's another such place that that happened in. Okay. And the Corvax can't get to it anymore, because why? They're machines. So obviously, they can't go to get to it. Just that simple. I think they would have figured out waterproofing by now. Anyway, who am I? So we can use a teleporter to go back to the system we were at. Where's the space station? Is it pretty far? No, well, it's over there.
starting to straighten myself out here. So we're just going to go here, hit the teleporter, we'll jump over to the other system. We'll already be in their space station, so that'll be good. So we only have to land one time. But again, hopefully the volume's down at a more manageable level. I apologize for that again. I will probably mention that in my recording. Uh, pardon me, my description as well. But the volume is a little bit high for most of the recording, and I apologize. Hopefully you can hear me out. Okay, and we just look for... Uh, where is it? Orvax Cartographer right there. Would it say previous system normally, but that's okay. Alright. Hopefully we can get all three of these done. We'll get the GEC done as well tonight. Today, this morning, whatever time you're watching it. Looks like we have a travel over there. Interesting. I'll show you something about that. Carvax looks up, swiftly scans me, then reveals their catalog of maps and charts. Reveal the divergence cube. You, it is real. But I beg, do not expose me further. Your claim is proved, traveler. I begin my request explaining my search for knowledge, my need to know more about the Atlas, the Sentinels, and the history of the universe. But as I speak, something goes wrong with the life form. They do not speak, they do not reply. As I peer closer, nanite clusters emerge through their face mask, spilling out onto their into their outstretched hands. Take the nanite clusters. The life form grabs at me, and in the moment of contact, nanite clusters touch my hands. They invade me, tumbling inside my body, through my exosuit, through my mind, through my soul. Even as I stand in space, my mind travels across the cosmos. I see life as the Korvax see it, a vast tapestry of wonder, of memories shared between countless beings and times. I stand on the Korvax homeworld as Gek ships fill the skies. I see the moment the first Korvax was melted down for their rare minerals. But even in the depths of their subjugation, there was hope. A bargain, a prayer to a greater being. The Korvax viewed the Atlas as what they might become in time, an intelligence beyond comprehension, beyond judgment. The vision ends, and I convulse as the Nanites clusters spill through my helmet. The Korvax watches me impassively. Ask about the Korvax, uh, the Atlas bargain. Look at the Nanite clusters. Look at them. The stuff of sentinels. Do you not see the truth of what we have said? Do you not see the of God? I look down at the Nanite clusters, puzzled. They look nothing like the shells of sentinel drones. They are just currency traded between species to create technology and weapons. Aren't they? They shift and undulate, changing their shape at every thought, at my every thought. They bubble and rise, sparking in and out of existence. I look at them, and it's the strangest thing. The nanite clusters look back. I'm sure of it. They watch me as I watch them. The nanite clusters are alive. There are sixteen of them. They... they need me. They crave me. I have only one choice. I take the nanite clusters, and as I do, the Corvax reaches out to me once more. This time, there is no vision, no miracle, just a handful of words. Existence is beautiful if you let it be. Life is not a question. There does not need to be an answer. Leave. Fascinating, isn't it? Corvax always were one of my, well, all three species I really liked in different ways. But a Corvax I always had a special interest in because of the way they viewed things. Granted, no, I don't think the Atlas is a god, of course. I think it's just a main program, a CPU, if you will. Uh, the main mother program that operates many programs or something along those lines. So, so we're supposed to speak to a Gark Gak cartographer, but it tells us to share the Corvax revelations with Nada, right? Well, let's do that real quick and make sure that we know this. time with no and we call that the end of the episode. The traveler that you saw on the space station, by the way, over in the corner, if you talk to them and you help them out and then you talk to them a second time, you can give them nanites. Maybe I'll show you that after this. I should have done that while I was in the space station. But I'll show you a little trick because if you run into travelers in the wild, so to speak, you can find their, their glyphs. You can find their gravestone markers at some point. If you are short glyphs, you can find a glyph, but that's another story. But they'll also give you that other thing that you can get, which turns into a piece of technology. Gek transgressions clear for all to see, but Gek only follow rules. 
All entities conform to their pattern, yet cannot be blamed. It is their pattern. It is determined. Ask about the Gek. The Olo friend is unlike other Gek. Olo friend turns their back on greed and war. But does Polo friend make a choice? Do other Gek make a choice? Perhaps Polo friend is not good, only anomalous. Nada cannot know, and so Nada th does not think on it. Polo friend is Polo friend, and that is sufficient. I don't think you can talk to him again. Yeah, we can, so we can't ask about no. We got our over 150 again. Do you learn about all our origins, traveler friend? Great mysteries, deep patterns, get Gorbax, Viking, Sentinel, all are rooted somewhere. Have you clues to your own beginnings? The strangest puzzle. Ask about other Gek. We are all a funny sort, traveler friend. Some are angry, some are greedy, some are dear friends. I will wait my whole life to see what I am. Isn't that fascinating? That is actually very interesting, because that comes after a Bible proverb, too, in regards to better... Well, I think Jesus himself said, better is the day of one's death than the day of one's birth. Because at the day of your death, or basically not necessarily your death, but your life is who you are. And a celebration of your life at the end of it, in this time that we live in anyway, is very important, actually know how a person lived and how they conducted themselves is very hard. It's what makes them worthy. But yet, a child or an infant that is born, well, celebrating that, while it is a celebration of life, they have not made a name for themselves. I'm going the wrong way. Yes, I am. So, very interesting thought, or point of view, if you will. Something to think about. So, over here, if you remember correctly, we saw... Nothing, apparently. They're all gone. I'm actually waiting for them to reappear. You know I saw them just as well as you saw them. They glitched out on us. We only have one Corvax over here. So there was a Traveler Entity in here, and I was going to show you what to do when you saw said Traveler Entity. Let's see if anything happens when I go here. Okay, back out again, because usually there's a whole host of beings floating around and walking around, and I'm not seeing anybody now. Let's go to the other side real quick and see if anything shows up. Anybody in here? Usual assortment of creatures, no problem. Well, they're not there anymore for some reason. I don't know why. Like I said, I think it's a glitch. Because all the creatures that are over here, I've got one Corvax over there on the top right, and that's it. And there was a whole host of beings floating around over here, and one of them was a Traveler. So if you talk to the Traveler, you'll get a series of questions. You can converse back and forth. But if you talk to them a second time, you can ask them about where they reside, and they will give you coordinates to a planet, but it will cost you usually about 100 or 150 uh, nanites to do so. So, all right, so we're going to go ahead and head out and speak to a Get Court photographer now. Actually, you know what? Got an idea. I'm going to show you a little trick. Rather than going into hyperspace, I literally just set that ship flying right through me. More quick peek. Nope, still don't see him. Weird. Choose a system that's GEC. Okay, so let's go to space stations. And you see how in the bottom corner it shows Vikeen, Corvax, and here's a GEC system. Okay, so why don't we head there? So that way you don't have to go to hyperspace and use up some of your hyperspace uh, fuel. Like I said, we're going to go. This is a longer video than usual. I know it's quite long, but we did that extra excerpt there, and I do want to get to a stop here. Because I think the next episode after this will be the last episode of this series. Is there a traveler here? I'm just going to take a quick peek. I do not see anybody. That looks like a traveler. Okay, very good. So here's the Get Cartographer. We go in here. It's not 
not appearing. Okay. We may have to go to a different system, and we may actually have to go to the galaxy map. We only had two systems here, though. That's the strange thing. So we're here. There was only one other Gek system, and that's this one. Let's just check it out. If it doesn't work out, we'll leave, and we'll go take a look and see what we can find. travelers here, because that would be nice if we could. A couple guys talking to themselves. That's great. It's not appearing above there. So we are going to have to leave, I think. What we what could happen is once we leave here and enter back into space, it may suddenly discover that we're in the system we need to be in. Let's see what happens. Unless they just fixed it or something. map it is. guess it didn't like that. So it wanted us to go back all the way over here. So it looks like it wants us to go all the way over here to this system right here. 858 light years away. Okay. And we're going to go to this pirate system first. So I'll go ahead and do the double jump here. Very, very odd. That usually works, just so you know. Now we know we have another dissonant system we can go to. Wow. Okay, something's not right here. Because... We were all the way over here. And we were visiting all these systems over here, correct? Oop, hold on. And that's the system I think we were just at, too. Let's go back over here, and I want to jump into the space station, because this one, if we go here, it's going to be a pirate system. So I think I've learned something new today, that somehow we bounced all over the system here by accident. And we'll see if we can go back to one of the systems we were at, if I can remember which one that was. And we jumped enough times that we may end up in a space battle soon. the system that we had the, uh, the, what do you call it, the anomaly. Weird noise. Did not expect that to happen. Usually what I just did usually works great. Is that? And it happens to be a traveler. So I'll show you what I was talking about with regards to travelers. I approach the lost traveler. Their skin is translucent if they were not truly there. Hmm, unexpected. Hello, my new friend. What business would you have with me? The lifeform tries to shake my hand, but pauses as we phase through one another. They are fascinated by the encounter, claiming to be a traveler. It is clear they come from a very different region of space. They have never heard of the Gek, Viking, Corvax, or any other of the sites I have encountered. They wish to know more in the spirit of cooperation. I'm going to tell them everything. I tell the traveler about the species I've encountered, sharing with them my scans, the name of planets I've been to, the words I have learned. They are curious, asking more and more. Nothing I say satisfies them. Eventually disappointed, they grow quiet. They hand me a gift, thanking me for what little I was able to tell them. And they gift is a memory fragment. Isn't that nice? Now, if you talk to him a second time, language is the basis of all trade, is it not? Let us make a deal, then. Number two, ask where they came from. Costs you 100 nanites. 
directions to a place of interest. And we get us an, an anomalous subspace signal. We're going to go ahead and do that so that you know that this is what happens when you find travelers and you are short of glyphs. Now you will get... Oh, that's my analysis. So you see it brings us to that. An unknown grave. So we'll go ahead and head there real quick. It's an unknown moon apparently too. Nope. Apparently I've been to this moon too. How interesting. Have I been to the grave? That's a very interesting point. Much longer episode than I expected this to be. I'm very sorry. Hope you don't mind. There we go. Ooh, ooh. Easy, easy, easy. Okay. Awaken. Open to me. I saw myself. Told them I would continue. Root of war. Sentinel's effort. Dreamt of it, red glow, its vast perfection. And the traveler's grave is marked by a glyph, an epitaph of some ancient technology. So we get our extra we extract our glyph. And our ability to travel in a known world. So leave the fallen traveler in peace, and you get your third glyph. You get another memory fragment. So to be clear, these are your memory fragments. Right here. They always give you a new piece of technology. So this one gave us a paralysis mortar unit, which I think do I already have one of those? Yes, I do. Right there. So we don't need that. You can hang on to it for another uh, weapon. You get your optical drill, which we also didn't have. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in. That's going to give this a very good boost to resources. Okay. And there we go. Alright, so off we go. Once again. Let me see if it gives us a different thing to do here. If we give a space real fast. Or is it going to take us to... Let me just check here. Free Explore Atlas Station. Oh, current mission. And it's taking us all the way out there. So, I don't think this is correct. I think something's not quite right. Let's head to the... Nice... Trinary. I think I said that before. I'm thinking I know this system now. So we're going to go ahead and... Head to the space station one more time. Use the portal to get out of here. Object of interest are very cool. So most of the time, that's what you get. You get a trader, and you talk to them. If they want to trade. Oh, they need the hydrogen jelly. Yeah, we'll go ahead and give them that. And they gave me in return, standing with Viking. Oh, some nanites. That's nice. Almost 100. That's cool. Nice. Okay, so space stations. Now, we've gone through a few. The last one we were at was Corvax. I don't know if it was this one or this one. We've hit this one. We're at a Gex system to begin with, I believe. So, it's probably this one. So let's head there. That, I'm hoping, will get us closer to where we need to be. So when we exit the station, we should be able to find a very close um, GEX system that we can go to. We'll see what happens here. Okay. Hey, look, our traveler's back. Right? So this is the system that we were at just moments ago. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm not going to read through all this. Uh, except that. Have faith. Not all dreams are idle fantasies. Fancies. Not all fictions are untruths. Perhaps all of this is based on something real. Perhaps we did once exist long ago. How interesting, huh? Proof? Here, look at this. 
Traveling moves an object from the exosuit. It looks abstract, crimson, flesh like perfect. Look at the object. Look at the object, and I'm filled with a sense of hope. Everything will be all right. I know it. Nothing can hurt me. All I have to do is believe and have faith. Not in a deity, not in some universal tyrant. No. It is this, right in front of me. Okay, that was creepy, right? But guess what? If we do it again, coincidence. I travel to the center of the galaxy, my friend. Perhaps we can assist each other. Ask where they came from. Offers directions to a place of interest. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to skip to the other place. Now, we have three glyphs so far. We need 16. This will give us number four. But I'm going to stop here. Even if we run into another traveler entity, I'm going to stop here. Just wanted to show you that one more time. It's not a grave that we've already been to, but we'll leave from the moon and we'll jump to hyperspace from here. All right. So, yeah, you probably read through the description and were thinking to yourself, wow, you know, I wonder if he knew all this when he was getting into it. And the answer is absolutely not. I had no idea I was going to be getting into all this today. I intended to do two videos tonight, but this turned into one very long one. That covered a bunch of ground, so I will have one more video at some other point. I'm not sure what that will be, probably sometime next weekend. Let me see. Okay, it always looks a little different from the one you saw on the station, right? Multiple contacts, multiple infra knives, fire, fire, structural, sentinels, sentinels surrounding, taking us to the harvest circuits. Glisten, now what they seem, not what they seem, not what. It's marked by a glyph, an epitaph of ancient technology. Obtain it, leave the traveler in peace. So we got our fourth glyph. Now the memory fragment, what do we get? Blade of armor goes on our ship, so we can put that up here too. Excellent. All right, good deal. It's not much of an armor, but it's okay. Now we'll head over to the Gek. Sorry we took so long to get there. That was a bit of a mess. And here we go. So is it closer? It is. Ah, and what the problem was is it was a system we've never been to before. That's interesting, even though there's Gek systems all the way around me. Wanted me to speci specifically find a system that I have never been to. So there you are. Do that instead. Don't do the thing I told you to do the first time. What? Ah, uh, well, plenty of times, yes, of course. There we go. Get cartographer is going to do. He's going to send us on some wild goose chase. There we go. Well, I don't think he has geese in mind. No travelers here. Nope, none. Okay. Not that I would have bothered them, but you know. Friend and maps trade many. I ask about Gek history. As the life heart begins to speak, I hear a faint hum, the soft voice of Null weaving the word Gek's words into something I can process. Information like that does not come for free, friend. Make me a deal. Perform work for my kin, then we shall have something to speak about. So we have to complete contracts for the Gek. So the difference is we have to go over here and complete two Gek contracts. If we're fortunate, two will be present. Level 1 Gek mission, we are not fortunate. So we have to salvage, uh, we should kill 12 creatures. Okay. That's pretty easy. It's called Vengeance, though. I wonder what kind of creatures it wants me to do. Okay, so we'll do that real quick. I figure we got just a few more minutes to this episode. Off we go. Where? talk to Apollo first. I'm sorry for contacting you so late or early. I don't know the time of day on your world, but that's a problem, isn't it? 
I all breaks off mid sentence, their heart turning crimson. I ask where they are. It found me. Just just like it found you. I, I can't feel my legs. It's strange. I'm still in here, don't you understand? It won't leave me. It's it's seen me. Ask where you are. It showed me things. The Atlas showed me my soul. The numbers in there. I Sometimes I think about my past, my future. Sometimes. I do what everyone in the universe does, I know. But I can't help but want to be happy. Money. Doing what we're what you're told day after day. That's the answer, isn't it? Say you don't know. Paolo stares at me as if seeing my face for the first time. Eventually they speak, their words passionate, higher. Um, no idea what he's saying there. Uvholnia sanos kuno. Zoev uv hol hilo zoev. At this point, Paolo says nothing else, but something, I don't know what, something fills me with hope, both for my friend and for all life. And communication. Uh oh, what happened to Apollo? Okay. So we have to t kill 12 creatures. For some reason, it's not telling us where to go. Locate creatures on a planet surface. So it really doesn't make a difference. Is this creature, this is a desolate planet. What do you think? Let's check it just in case. It says desolate. It's got cactus flesh. So there's, there's plant life. Could there be animal life? Desolate usually means no, but I begin to wonder, so... Oh, what do you know? Oof. Okay, hold on, sorry. There we go. Park here. Looks like a convenient spot, right? Gives the... Gives a moment for the creatures to populate. Uh, exosuit. So we're gonna create things here. We want a... Carbon nanotube, we need a antimatter housing. There we go, and that gives us one more spot in our exosuit. Up down there or up here? Let's go down. Okay. Alright, creatures should be showing up. Okay, well we got bird-like creatures anyway. Second one. There's only five on this planet. Tell me that they're not all flying creatures. Ground, flying, and underground. We have one rare creature on the ground. But even if it's rare, because there's only one ground creature, we should find it. Make sure it is a creature we can actually do something with. What makes me think we can't? That's a bird. Okay. Well, I don't see anything. So this may be just literally the wrong planet to be doing this at. So let's go back to our ship. That was kind of useless. We need a planet. Okay. There's a planet over here. What does it have? Flame yeah, rupture. So there's nothing there. Please tell me there's other planets on this system here. Something that has something. Frost crystal. It's cold, but it should have animals. Unless it's all ocean. Well, I guess we'll find out, right? Talk about your luck. Take me to a system, tell me to kill some animals, and then give me a whole entire system that has no animals. Alright, looks like we do have some land masses. So we'll head to this one over here. Something with a little more light. Okay, that works for me. Okay. 
Whoa, okay, that was a peak. Good gravy. Gotta wait for the animals to appear. Great, more flying creatures. That's three of the eight. Any ground based creatures, please? I can't believe this. What is with this planet? This whole system. Underwater, 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 underground, underground. Unbelievable. Do we have anything in this? We have three planets in the system. And the only other one is a flaming flannel. Uh, planet. Flannel. Is that even a word? Flannel? Is that a flannel planet? So, you want me to kill creatures, but you gave me a system that has no creatures. So we'll hit the flame ruptured planet. No, I'm not heading towards you. I'm just gonna do it anyway. Yeah, I'll use those. Wow. And here I thought we'd be done by now. But you had to send me to a system that literally has no animals on it. I don't even know if killing sea creatures would work this point. You, huh? Well, let's go ahead and do it. I don't have anything I need. Look at that. Gamma root and fecium. They're just really ticking me off now. Anyway, what do we got that I can get rid of? Unstable gel. Get rid of our larval cores. At least two of those. Uh, I'll keep the divergence cube. 26 of those now, huh? Quad servos. Let's get rid of two of those. Keep the hard frame engine. Needle cores. Decide, geodecide, erroneum. Rope bulkhead we'll keep. The bottom guys. We'll keep the living controls. And that's it. Okay. Anything in our inventory over here? Doesn't appear that there's anything I want to sell. Except the Gek Relic. Alright, maybe you too. Okay, bye. No, we're not going to the mission board. We're heading to that planet. Cut that out. So we're going to check the flame ruptured planet in the hopes that there's animals living on it. larva. Really? Cool. Oh, those planets, yeah. Okay, let's head straight down. We'll go ahead and land and see what we can find. Let's take a look at that. Yeah. Wow. Cool. We actually checked that out. I don't think it actually does curse you in any way. So. Hey. Looks like we have animals finally. One of 13. Okay, we're not going to worry about that. Okay, that's one creature down. Two, three, four, five. I hate doing this. It drives me nuts. Six, seven, eight. 
think that was nine, ten. Eleven. Is that twelve? Yep. Like I said, I hate killing creatures for no reason. It annoys me. But it is what it is. Mission agent. When we turn in this mission, we'll get a second one. Hopefully, it'll be something a little bit quicker, like delivering a product or something like that. We'll call it. And we'll talk to Noel one more time, and then we'll be on our last crusade. Mission agent. Okay, we are turning this in. And we have one more. Read a planetary harvester. Okay, I think we can do that. Okay. This is our last one. Contact Null after this. This is gonna. This is gonna start a fight. But we are not gonna fight. I would go through the entire sequence, but I think this episode's lasted longer than we all anticipated. And it disappeared. It's one of those two places over there. That place on the right is nothing. It's this place here. Especially if you got a couple of, uh, yeah, see, a lot of there. This is what they're looking for. Let's go ahead and make sure it's locked in. in here. Let's gather some things while we're in here. We will raid this. I approach the terminal. The information the client requires is un unencrypted and readily available. Now the required data, I should return to the mission agent and make the delivery. Just let the sentinels continue searching. And any second. And we're done. Might as well grab that while I'm here. I mean, you know, what a waste. Okay, back to the agent. Oh, there he is, right there. Like I said, after this, we'll be talking to Mel. Oh, this is mission. Okay, so we gotta return to the mission agent.
and this should complete out our last objective. After he gets done waving at us. And in the mission. Okay. Get some nanites out of it. More standing increase. We just gotta wait for the emblem to appear over him. Wait a moment. There it is. Ah, you've been making me rich, friend. I know you. You're kind. The fearless adventurer. The completer of contracts. You think you are a leader. Others fight wars with weapons and fear, but power is more than strength. It is trade, incentives, information. If you've enough units, others will change the world for you, even without realizing. Ask about the Gek history. History? Why would you care about that? Something is wrong with the Gek's voice. Ask about the first spawn. I ask about the first spawn, the Gek Empire that once decimated galaxies and enslaved the Korvax species. Ah, friend, you have been talking to Viking warriors, yes? If ever they hate Gek. Ever they slander us, refusing to forgive the past. Do not worry. All is well. All is at peace. Repeat your question. Why do you persist, friend? The Gek are different now. Gek seeks no harm, no malice. The Gek changed. Ask how. Must you know? Why do you care, friend? The Gek seems disturbed by my questions, asking why I care. It is clear they do not wish to discuss the events of their species past. It is a shame I see in their eyes. Oh, pardon me. Is it shame I see in their eyes or something else? Say the quarterbacks care. Don't. Don't. You understand. Don't you see it? It never ended. The Gek's face begins to twitch as they speak, a sickly sweet pheromone emerging into the air. Breathe it. But the Gek did not change. They invaded our souls. I blink and I'm on Balaran itself. Homeworld of the Gek. I stand within the center of the first spawn, Empire, witnessing events that occurred long ago. Cartographer Dioadada stands next to me, watching what I watch, tears streaming down their face. I see enslaved Korvax move from Gek spawning pool to spawning pool. As each one, they cut into their own suits. Nanite clusters pool out, falling into the fluid of embryonic Gek. It is then that I finally understand. The fall of the Gek... Their conversion to the Atlas, their release of the Corvax. It was not redemption, it was revolution. Hundreds of Corvax sacrificing their immortality, mingling their nanite clusters with the un Gek. The Gek did not become good. They became Corvax, at least in part. Their slaves entered their slaves altered Gek brains, shifting their nature. For the first and final time, the Corvax Convergence delighted in the pain of their oppressor. Say they will be free soon. There's a reason I'm saying that. The Gek stares at me, the vision coming to an end. They appear to be upset at my words. Do not judge us, Traveler. That our ancestors were altered, they did not find, for, find goodness by themselves. That has nothing to do with us. We just want peaceful lives. We just want to be happy. Leave. As I leave, I think through what I've learned. The Gek released the Corvax because their biology was altered. There was no spiritual revelation, no grand redemption. It was a switch in the brain, an alteration to a genetic code. I think of the simulation Nada showed me, their intended heaven for Artemis' soul. It was a false reality full of arbitrary and unseen rules. How is life any different? But I... Is life any different in this universe? So we gotta speak to no. We gotta locate a hollow terminus, and this is where we're gonna end our episode. We're already beyond the two hour mark at this point. Please be on this planet right in front of me. So we're going to talk to Null here, and we're going to close out the episode here. Very long episode. I think it's longer even than the Dreams of the Deep episode. I'm pretty sure of that. Um, I'm almost certain of it. The point being is we wanted to get to this particular 
episode. I want to get to this particular point. The approximate location. Let's do a search. Looks like it might be there. Yep, looks like that's it. Wow, dark, isn't it? So we'll go ahead and grab. There it is. Okay. Get this. Got to do it. It's part of the job. Okay, so we're nanites, of course. Uh, doesn't look like there's anything in here. Let's turn on. Oh, we could have got stuff in the plants, but that's okay. I don't need any carbon at this time. Anything in here? Looks like we got some nanites. Okay, good deal. Let's go up to the terminal. Why is a crazy looking planet? Huh? Strange colors. Again, something I like about No Man's Sky. Ah, this is crazy looking. Multiple signals, blah, blah, blah. Turn to null. Tuned, tuned. Hey, no. What do you got? Well then, tell me what you saw. Tell me what you learned. Cue's null of or of knowing already. Knowing what? How can I tell you if I know what you know if you have not told me? I tell no all that I've learned. The Vikings crusade against the Sentinels, how they nearly succeeded only to have the barbarism of the Gek first spawn draw the Sentinels back to the galaxy. I learned that the homeworld of the Korvax was destroyed by the Gek, the survivors enslaved or melted down. For years, the Korvax toiled beneath their oppressors until the Empire fell and they were free once more. The Gek became Atlas worshippers, but from the Gek I learned something different. The Gek did not redeem themselves of their own accord. A great number of Korvax sacrificed themselves, mingling their nanite blood with countless onboard Gek. Their impulse to trade is a mere evolution of their impulse for, to war. A few signals switched in the brain. Ask what Null knows. I was born to travel, to see these worlds, to catalog them, to give a name to every creature, every planet. The skies, they were mine. Almost sounds like Adam. The Atlas told me I could never see them all. There were too many, so I did what I had to do. I survived in the face of eternity. I saw all the worlds of my universe. I returned to the Atlas. I told them what I had done. I asked if it was proud. It laughed at me. I'm sure of it. It showed me universe upon universe, each with another traveler just like me. I was not special. I was not unique. The things I had to do to get here things I had to become. None of it meant a thing. Listen. I did not lie to you. I really do want to discover what's wrong with existence. The walls between worlds are falling, and that's bad for everyone. Ask how they know. I've been alive for a very long time, Traveler. I know as much as you would know had you seen the things I have seen. Sounds familiar, right? All I know is this. The Atlas had infinity to work with, and with few exceptions, this triad repeats. Gek, Korvax, Vikine, Gek, Korvax, Vikine, traitors, warriors, scientists. All their stories ending in violence. Think about it. How would the Atlas speak? How would it cry for help? It would use the only language it knew. It would speak with life. It would create. Whatever these life forms do, they always end in conflict. I think something terrible is happening to the Atlas. It is screaming the only way it knows how. Ask what could be done. And now, it won't speak to me anymore. It won't. It, it's chosen you instead. After all I did for it, after... I wanted, I wanted to find out what was different about the, this universe. We are who we are, but you, whether because of some soul, because of simulation, it does not matter. Why won't it speak to me? Why aren't I enough? Null's channel begins to falter, their hologram beginning to fade. They are disconnecting from the hollow terminus. As I watch them depart, I see another channel activate. A signal emerges. Hopefully I survive this. As the storm rolls in. Traveler, I made it through. I found my way out of the portal. Where are you? I'm standing by a hollow terminus. Let's trade locations. Let's meet and get off this world. 
share coordinates. I share my coordinates and Paulo shares theirs. There must be some mistake. According to our data, we are standing in the same place. We are communicating using the same hollow terminus. We try again, but still the results are the same. The world is silent but for our voices. What's happening here? Why can't we see each other? So you do not know. As we speak, I receive a distress signal. It's language my own. It arrives from across the planet. Don't be that. Don't be like that. You are not alone. Tune back to Apollo. I try to tune back to Apollo, fighting the static insistence of the intruding signal. The hollow terminus is showing. Are you receiving? Let's meet and get off this world. Apollo appears to receive the same signal broadcasting from the same location on their own world. Agree to meet. We agree to go and find the source of these distress beacons. Perhaps we'll continue this discussion when we get there. All right. So that is the end of our episode. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. So we're going to find the source of the signal. We're going to find out what's really happening. So we know several important things. Let's head to the ship before I die and burn up and yeah never mind everything's on fire down here as you can see oh crap uh, there all right so what we have found is that everything seems to be a simulation that we null is the cause of a lot of the problems that have occurred he's been around since pretty much the very beginning and he's perpetuated his life from a biological life form into the machine you see before you. Very few biological parts remain. And he has been around for ages. Whereas Apollo is trying to do the same thing, but he's much younger than Null is. And Apollo is starting to detect the same problems. But almost got caught just like Artemis did. But he escaped. Null, who we don't know is their real name because it has been lost in time and Frankly, I don't think Null remembers what their name is anymore. They realize that something's going on with the whole universe. That the all the universes, all the different galaxies, they're all having trouble right now. Something's wrong with the universe. In the next episode, we're going to come to the conclusion of all this. We're going to do the jumps we need to jump. We're going to go system to system. We're going to find out what happens. And we'll bring this to an end. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Please feel free to hit the like and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you in the next episode in another week. Thank you again. Take care, everybody.